Hello guys, MacCubed here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install macOS 10 on a Power Mac G5 with a non-functional DVD drive. Um, what you're going to need for this tutorial is a leopard image put either onto put onto USB like I have, which is refusing to boot on G5s like most um, do. So what you're going to do is you're going to take an external hard drive that you're going to need, or any two and a half, three and a half, any size, capacity, whatever, it just has to be more than, um, I think, seven gigabytes for a Leopard. Um, you're going to take that hard drive, and up here you're going to install it in the drive bay, connecting SATA cables all up. Now, once that those are all connected up, you're going to take your USB, and you are going to plug it into the computer's USB port. Now, due to this not working off of USB, an idea, a workaround, that I came up with was by using the system's default, SATA. And since SATA is more reliable, quicker, just better in general than USB, second, like, than Firewire, I thought that this would work. So, I'll show you what to do. So that's just an actual one that I have. Um, the one that I'm using for testing purposes is up there right now. So what you're going to do is I'm just going to spotlight disk utility. So now once you're in disk utility, you are going to go to the device. Now this is my Western Digital Green Drive right here. This is the one terabyte drive and it's partitioned into two. So now this is my 20 gigabyte um, two and a half inch. So now up here there's first aid, erase, partition, read, and restore. So what you're gonna do is you would go to restore and as a source over here you would find your USB which is in my case 7.5 Sandus Cruiser. You drag it or you drag Ma the Mac OS 10 cell DVD partition until the plus comes up. You were to release it, then up here you would drag this partition. Now you would hit, you would click erase destination and then restore. But for extensive purposes, I have already done this. Now, if we look at this, we get this is the USB as you can see based upon what it says up here. Now, it, as you can see, it's fully, fully functional, you know. Everything would open. Now, here are my hard drives. Yeah, Macintosh HD, Mac OS 10 install DVD, Macintosh HD 2. So I would open Mac, Mac OS 10 install DVD as my hard drive. And voila, exact same thing. Now, to show you that this is a working workaround, um, I'm going to hold down the power button for whatever many seconds. Power back up. Alt key on the keyboard, or the option key if you're using a Mac keyboard. Um, once this is done on a G5, the fan should sort of make a more um, more audible noise like they did just here. And this is how you view your bootable devices. So now we got Macintosh HD, this is my Leopard partition, this is the install Leopard partition, which is on the 20 gigabyte drive. Then over here we got Tiger. So, to show booting, there usually on an Intel New World Mac, there would be the USB partition showing up in this list. But as you can see, my G5 is refusing to boot from USB, so we'll only get the hard drives this one being separated from these two on different drives. So, we're going to arrow over to Mac OS 10 install DVD, which is part on the 20 gigabyte drive, and we're going to hit enter. And we got Apple logo coming up. It takes a little bit longer to boot due to this being a very slow drive. It's an um came out of an Xbox. So, a little bit on the slow side. And I did do this based on the method that I just showed you by using USB as the source, the hard drive up there as the destination, and it usually takes a little bit longer to copy. 
except um, I've done this twice now, and it's working perfectly fine. Although I tried doing it with Linux, it did not work with Linux, but so it's worked with Mac OS X, which is good. It's taking a little bit longer to boot than usually, and I'm pretty sure we're about to get the install screen while well, um, greeting. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. There's the leopard background, Aurora, and Mac OS X install. So just for testing purposes, we're just going to go through. Choose English as the main language. So we got the leopard installer. Now from here, you can do basically anything involving all this. Or you can just click continue and agree. And then choose your install destination. So as you can see, this is a pretty easy way to get around the USB non-functioning boot of G5 Max. Um, this will only work with um, any Mac that has two hard drive bays um, that are supported. So most mostly desktop Macs, G3. Um, towers, G4 towers, and G5 towers here. Um, there might be other ways to boot on G5 iMacs, um, but I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, on G5 iMacs there is another way, um, but that involves buying the um, DVD drive bay thing. It's like dual bay or dual drive or something. What it is, it's a it's like the similar thing to, um, I know I have one in here somewhere. Uh, okay, yeah, let's just use this for example. So we got a Dell floppy drive here. So basically what it is, it's in the exact same shape as the DVD drive would be, but instead of a DVD drive being here, there's a hard drive cut out which has SATA, and you can just put a laptop drive like this one into it, and using the ribbon cable that your DVD drive came in with, you can just plug it in, plug it up to the computer, mount it, and you'll have two hard drives. Um, and then you can do the same trick with that, and then after you're done installing, you can just reformat the second hard drive and then use it as extra storage. So, hope, <coughs> uh, hope this helped you guys um, install Leopard or any other operating system on your Power Mac that is refusing to boot from USB. Um, so thanks for watching guys and hope you enjoyed and hope this helps.